Antunes from uh, Portugal. She will inform us about a, a flight simulator. And you may know that in many aircraft there are key networks used. And uh, also that's the reason why we have them in flight simulators. And um, I think she will inform us about uh, the higher layer protocols which she is using, as well as those products which they have developed uh, to be integrated in a flight simulator. And the flight simulator is maybe as complex as a car, or even more complex sometimes. Uh, in minimum, there is a lot of uh, communication required. And uh, yeah, please take the floor, Anna. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, I will present CAN-based modules uh, developed for an A320 flight simulator. Uh, the work was done by me, and Antunes, and my colleagues José Souza and Vitor Antunes from the Polytechnical Institute of Setúbal in Portugal. So this is the summary of my presentation. I will start by an introduction. Then I will present the research and development team and our background. I will talk about flight simulator systems and the architectures that we choose to implement. Then I will present the module's features, uh, then the modules, and finally I will conclude. So flight simulation uh, dates back from the 60s of the last century. Uh, it uh, began uh, uh, by being used by commercial airlines to train pilots because it allowed them to um, train in uh, different conditions, both effectively and securely. So uh, originally it was used to train pilots, of course, and then uh, the uh, entertainment versions arrived with the massification of uh, personal computers. So initially entertainment flight simulations appeared as games. Um, maybe some of you recall uh, those games with Spectrum back in the 80s. Uh, the interface with the user was uh, very small. We only had the keys to make the plane fly, so it was limited interface with the user. Uh, but then, uh, with the, the decrease in hardware costs and the increase in the, processi the, the processing capabilities of uh, computers, uh, prices drop and companies start to offer uh, hardware uh, modules that allow to simulate the instruments of the cockpit, and so the users start to add those uh, instruments to their um, simulation and uh, uh, try to get a more realistic uh, feeling. So nowadays uh, there are companies that uh, sell uh, modules of instruments to uh, compose the cockpits. There are other companies that sell uh, software to emulate uh, other things like the visual environment of the simulation or the flight dynamics. And the uh, instruments tend to be uh, tactile to provide tactile feedback for the people who is using the simulator to uh, have a, a realistic uh, uh, use just like the pilot of a real aircraft. So uh, just another thing. Uh, this uh, uh, market segment is, is small, but uh, the users are very enthusiastic. So uh, people really like to buy modules and to um, build their own cockpits. And other people with more financial ability buy the entire cockpit just to have fun with it. So about the research and development team and our background, um, we work at the Polytechnical Institute of Setúbal in Portugal, which is an educational institution, and we cooperate with some uh, clients of the industry to develop hardware products. We work in the electrical engineering department. Um, our main areas of research and development are uh, acquisition and actuation system, both centralized and distributed. <laughs> And we also work in electrical mobility. Basically, we build hardware uh, customized to our clients' needs. I will talk just about uh, three of our previous projects. This one was the first one almost 10 years ago. We worked in a training flight simulation that are being used by Portuguese Air Force. Um, the previous versions that they had used point-to-point -point connections to connect all the sensors and actuators 
it seemed that it was a, a cabling nightmare. So uh, our proposition was to use a, a CAN network to connect all the sensors and actuators and then to use a gateway to route it to the Ethernet uh, network uh, through the uh, computer uh, simulation. Another project more recently, it was development of a battery management system for a, a, an electrical vehicle, a prototype vehicle. Uh, it uses the boards that are placed here on the corners and then it had a master that was routed to the network of the automobile using also the CAN protocol. More recently, we are working on a data acquisition system for power transformers to monitor the water level inside the oil of the transformers. Uh, this project is in the, the test phase. We are starting the tests in, a, in the real uh, power transformers in a real environment. So for the project that uh, concerns uh, this presentation today, uh, we were uh, contacted by a local small company that was just started. And our research team is composed of two professors with a PhD, one with a master's and two engineering students, uh, all uh, from the electronic uh, engineering domain. So our client asked us uh, to, to build uh, modules for an A320 uh, aircraft flight simulator. And uh, the main concern was that uh, the modules should be as realistic as possible, both functionally and visually. And uh, the main objective of the company is to be able to construct entire cockpits and to sell them as final products. So the first thing that we did was to look at the architecture that they used in their um, flight simulator. And they use a lot of personal computers connected by an Ethernet, uh, an Ethernet uh, uh, network. The main computer runs the, the main simulation software. And the other ones run add-ons. Most of the add-ons concern visual, um, uh, visual add-ons to simulate other parts of the cockpit. Uh, when there are interface devices, they are connected through a serial uh, connection. Uh, nowadays, it's a USB connection. And when there are many interface devices, they are connected using a USB hub. So this architecture is not very scalable. Uh, when there are many uh, devices, it tends to be also a cabling nightmare. So we decided to propose a different approach. So our aspirational uh, uh, architecture is this one on the right. So if the client uses a lot of modules like ours that have a can connection, a can interface, you can connect all the interface devices using a CAN bus and then use a gateway CAN to Ethernet to uh, send the data to the main computer and to the other computers. So um, this is adequate when there are lots of devices, when there is large bandwidth, and the disadvantage is that the client has to buy a, a gateway. So in order for our, cl our client to be able to sell the modules um, to stand alone or in smaller networks, we decided to propose this uh, other architecture by integrating in each device a gateway CAN to, UA, UA, uh, to RS232, and then you can use a, an inexpensive cable connector to change from RS232 to USB and connect it to the main uh, computer. So this architecture can be used when there are a few uh, devices or even when uh, the client buys only one and it can stand alone directly connected to the uh, main computer. So about the modules features, I've already told you that the modules can be used in a CAN network or standing alone thanks to the gateway CAN to RS232 that was included in all the modules. And concerning the message format, we thought it would be uh, preferable to use a standardized approach, uh, well known in the aviation domain, so we didn't reinvent the wheel. Uh, and we chose the CAN Aerospace specification because it's public and open. Uh, 
it has already been used in other flight simulators and also in uh, some aircrafts. So concerning the CAN aerospace specification, I will not go into details. It's public, well known. You can consult the information if you like to. Um, there is, they provide a default identifier distribution for normal data operation. And whenever possible, we use those uh, predefined identifiers and messages in our modules. But of course, uh, the specification was developed for real aircraft and in a flight simulator, uh, the, the flow of data and the re requirements in terms of data is very different from the real uh, application. So we also had to um, define lots of user-defined data messages and we should to do so using the low priority data range of identifiers that the protocol specifies. The CAN Aerospace specification also provides a connection-oriented node service protocol with several services. We implemented three of the proposed services and defined another, user-defined. So um, we implemented the identification service, which is mandatory. It allows for the modules to identify themselves within the network. Uh, we also implemented the node ID settings to set the local node ID of each module. And uh, um, we tailored the, the module configuration service because as, as I will present after, we, had, we have um, a common boards that uh, are multifunctional and we need to, in the moment of um, configuration by the manufacturer, he needs to select what of the functions will be used. So that is done by uh, software using this uh, service. Um, at last, we defined uh, an automatic board rate configuration, which uh, provides for a, a mean for a module to test networks for 125, 250 or 500 kilobits per second to see if the network uses that board rates and to adapt itself to that uh, uh, value in order to be able to work properly. So about the CAN2RS232 gateway um, feature that uh, is implemented in all the modules, it is a bidirectional uh, gateway and uh, we thought of it uh, in order for uh, support CAN aerospace, uh, allowing it to be extended to the personal computer. So we choose uh, the, the communication protocol between the personal computer and our modules is just like uh, uh, follows the same format of the CAN aerospace message specification. So uh, functionally, you can look at the personal computer as being another node on the CAN aerospace network. Um, the, the gateway it is not uh, fully transparent in both sides because when it receives uh, node service data messages, they are only sent across uh, the gateway to the uh, CAN uh, network side if the node ID uh, which is addressed is different from the local node ID because if it's equal, the service is provided right there and there's no need to spread the message to the other side. So all other data messages are routed across the gateway uh, in order to be analyzed by the network. This is a slide showing the hardware architecture of our modules. They uh, use, uh, are based on a, a microcontroller. We use the peak microcontroller. Uh, the power supply uses a power source of 12 volts. And then there are uh, circuits to uh, connect uh, different kinds of, uh, of inputs like switches and coders, selectors, and also analog inputs with uh, their conditional signal uh, circuits. And as outputs, uh, all the modules have a PWM backlight control because the background lights, the intensity of the light can be controlled by the, the pilot. And uh, also we have uh, drivers for LEDs and displays. Almost uh, every module has one. And some modules need for a motor, so also have a motor drive. Concerning the communications, I've already told you that uh, we use CAN and RS232 to communicate to the exterior. 
About the modules, um, the, our client asked us to start the development of the modules by the pedestal area of the cockpit, which is the one on the right side and the, near the floor. So we analyzed the, the, the requirements uh, functionally for each module, and uh, we saw that uh, many of the functionalities were the same. There were then uh, tailored uh, details for each one, so we decided to develop a common board, which is this one, that can implement the flaps model, the spoiler model, the pedals, throttle, and gear model. The gear model belongs to, to the front side, but also uses uh, the same uh, module. So this module is, is the one that uh, is, uh, um, needs to be configured at the manufacturing time. At the end, uh, the, the manufacturer uh, needs to choose what is the function that will be implemented, and that is done by the uh, module configuration service provided through uh, can aerospace interface. For the more complex modules, we had to uh, develop dedicated hardware modules. Uh, this one here on the right is for the FCU, and this one here is for the AFIS. These are pictures of the final uh, version of the modules with their casings, the landing gear, flaps, pedals, and spoilers, and the FCU, AFIS, and throttle, and the engine panels, uh, which are the ones that have been developed so far. Now I have uh, just a small video to show you the aspect of the cockpit. You can notice our modules are the ones that have those bright LED uh, appearance in orange or uh, yellow. The others are simulated uh, by software using uh, um, TFT monitors. So I guess you, you've, you've all seen, I'll stop here and just to conclude, I presented the CAN-based modules for an A320 entertainment flight simulator. Um, uh, those modules are commercialized by our country and he has sold for several countries. Other modules are under development like the uh, landing gear and uh, uh, switching panel devices. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mrs. Antunes. Are there questions from the audience? From the audience? No questions at all.
then I have a question. Why you have selected the aerospace uh, protocol? There's also an R-ring protocol under development, or it's already released uh, since 2007. Uh, this is more modern, it's more uh, adapting uh, that what is integrated in the real aircraft. Yes, but uh, as far as I know, it's paid, isn't it? So our, it was difficult to, uh, the company was starting, uh, it was difficult to, uh, to point the, to, f towards that solution. It was uh, really a pragmatic decision based on cost. Okay, this has more historical reasons, and then if we would start now, you would go with the R-ing uh, approach, maybe? If I could convince them to go, yes, I would, because uh, I think it's important to have a standardized and well-known uh, um, application uh, layer so that you can interface with other <coughs> manufacturers and uh, provide different uh, um, modules for your cockpit. Yeah. Okay, are there questions? Oh, yeah, there's one question. Flight. Jim Mir from Microflight. Uh, I'm on the Air Inc. Uh, 825 committee, mm -hmm. and Tan Aerospace was the motivation for us uh, selecting uh, uh, Tan as that protocol. So it's a very close sibling, and it follows very closely what's been done. Um, the, the, this comes to a question in a second, just it's an update on when, what is happening with uh, Can Aerospace and the company is Sox Light Systems down in southwest of Munich. Uh, now uses uh, CAN uh, Aerospace uh, across a, a full level D simulator. Uh, and uh, not only that, uh, they used to have uh, the displays were provided by the military uh, as real equipment, but mm -hmm. the equipment was no longer available because they, it was too expensive to supply it that way, so they now have CAN simulated displays as well. So uh, it's being used widely, and it's interesting that you chosen that, it it's, uh, gives us some degree of uh, uh, validation that something we've chosen is the right one. And uh, the question that I have of you is, uh, is there any intent? It sounded like you were uh, headed toward a, an entertainment version mostly, is that so? Or is this possible to, for uh, real-time, real-life simulation? That, as well, and maybe in some kind of level simulator that might be used by uh, organizations for training. No, at the fir at the first, uh, the 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 point was just to do a simulation, uh, an entertainment simulation um, uh, facility. So uh, it, it's not out of question, but it started like that, and later on, depending on the 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 growth of the company and what they they need. Uh, they can go that far or not, I, I'm not sure. So I'm not the company, you know, I'm just the, the I, I, we were hired to develop the, the hardware. I'm not able to say, I, I understand the interest, but to be uh, certified for uh, training pilots, there are lots of requirements that need to be met uh, concerning real-time uh, uh, features, so it, it will require uh, additional work over this. And, and one last comment is that what I appreciate mostly about your presentation is the challenge that you're taking on of interfacing across from CAN to, to other uh, devices and other network protocols, uh, which I think is a challenge going forward in our ability to remain relevant and current, uh, whether it be Ethernet and CAN or it be something else. Yes. Thank you. Arthur. So, hi. Uh, maybe I overheard it. Um, how many nodes are typically connected to the network, to the CAN network? At this point, you, you can have one of each of our modules, I'm not sure, 12. But then, incrementally, you can build up more. So, and can you say how much you utilize the network? So far, we are using 125 kilobits per second. We're, we're, we've connected uh, 12, and we, we didn't have the need to measure that yet. Uh, Arthur Mutter from Bosch. Um, you focus your entertainment and a real flight simulator. Did you compare the network architecture you used and what is used in a real network simulator? And 
what is the difference so in complexity and what do you mean by a real flight simulator a re uh, for training yes, yes we, uh, for, for real training yes no yes. no I didn't compare with uh, with that kind of solution I focused on entertainment uh, flight simulators okay, which so are built by people with computers and modules so not the, the real thing so you have if also no feeling if a real flight simulator is twice as complex or ten times or because you have roughly the same module so it has it's to be It's much something. more complex because I think everything is uh, most of the, the, the instruments are hardware based and here half of them are uh, software uh, versions so it should be much more complex and uh, re the requirements for the network should be also very uh, uh, higher. <laughs>